recording our uh, sermons and lessons and just uploading that to YouTube and then pre-recording the entire service, uh, live streamed a couple, uh, Easter and Pentecost, and then went full live streaming the last Sunday in August, and we've been back to public worship since September 6th and live streaming. All right. <coughs> I'm James Hendrickson. Most of you know that by now. Um, pastor at Hosanna in Edmonton. We've been live streaming for about a year and a half now. Um, I've been working in video and stuff like that since back in my Camrose days. So um, but I did some services at Messiah in the 80s, early in the 80s, when we used to have that little, uh, that little trailer, travel trailer that was set out by the local cable company. We used to drive that around. Did hockey games and all sorts of stuff. It was fun. Um, but uh, we're in a different, uh, slightly different world now. So we're trying to um, come. Uh, up to the time, up to the date. Um, we discovered here that live streaming looks a whole lot different when there's no congregation. And so we did some stuff here to try and um, bring in as many of our congregational members in, into the service as possible. And during COVID, the first part of COVID, that was mostly done through recordings. So we would have people read the lessons at home, um, some of the dialogues, various things like that, record it. Uh, we'd bring it in, uh, we'd edit it, because often the sound was not uh, quality was not great, so we'd fix that as much as possible. If they're reading uh, a lesson, for example, we'd put the text up in the corner. We used iMovie for that to edit that and, and put the, add the text. Um, and we use that graphics program just to generate the, the graphics themselves. Um, we did a, a segment. We started fairly early on. My COVID experience about what people were doing during COVID. Um, so those were about a minute and a half, two minute videos. Um, and we played one of those pretty much every week, and people really appreciated all that sort of stuff. This summer, we ran uh, Virtual Bible Sunday, uh, sort of a VBS program, ran in conjunction with the church. So we did five weeks of that. Um, the Sundays, we used Dr. Seuss themes. So um, Cat in a Hat, uh, no, sorry, Green Eggs and Ham, um, Walking in My Pocket, several of those books um, tied to a scripture lesson. Um, so we read the book in church. It was pre-recorded. Because if you ever try to read <laughs> some of those books live, you'll know it can be a, uh, easily a disaster. And then following church, we had uh, uh, some particular programming for kids, uh, silly song, um, a science experiment, the cooking thing, and something else. So um, that was good. And then we packaged that last piece together so other people, if they just wanted the BBS part, could get that as well. So, so we've... Uh, COVID's forced us, forced us to become quite innovative about how we've approached video um, and what we've done. So we've grown a lot through this process and we still got some room to grow, but uh, it's it's been challenging, but fun at the same time. And uh, so that's just the nature of it. Okay, so some uh, questions to ask or think about when you come is, what do you, why do you wanna do this? <laughs> is, and is this a short-term or long-term project? Um, for us, it's a long-term project. For some others, it's a short-term, um, just for COVID time. But you might want to think about that because it'll have an impact potentially on how you might do it. Um, what re resources do you have available? So that includes what technology do you have that you can use or repurpose or make that work? Um, money, how much money do you have available? Um, volunteers, do you have people to run the system once you put it in place? Things like that. Is this something you want to build over time? Or are you prepared to make changes to your regular, or, and are you prepared to make changes to your regular services to accommodate live streaming? Um, so uh, TV hates a pause <laughs> and silence often. So um, things need to move quicker when you're live streaming. So you can't have those general pauses, which also means for the worship leaders, you don't get those chances to, uh, to, to chat back and forth about what's coming next. So um, it certainly does affect that. All right, so the first area we're going to talk, several areas to talk about, and we can stop after each one of your questions, and then we'll look at some of the hardware setups, mine and uh, Stevens, and then we'll, uh, whatever other questions you have, we'll, we'll deal with that. So, so sound, so uh, Chris had asked about that. Um, so if you're using a single camera, like just an iPhone or something like that, it's a different story. But if you have a separate camera and separate audio, you have to consider how are you going to ma mate the two back together, and um, are they going to come at the same time? So <clears throat> we, for example, have to put a, 
200 millisecond delay, so about a quarter of a second delay on our audio because it gets there faster than our video. So that doesn't sound like very much, uh, less than a quarter of a second, but it makes a big uh, difference in real life when the you hear the sound and then the lips move afterwards and it's really, um, it's irritating. <laughs> um, and if you have people that are hard of hearing, it can make them harder if they read lips and it gets out of sync and it really causes confusion. So that's uh, potentially a thing. Um, there's also sometimes when you want to, you have to remember that for um, live stream or recorded, everything has to be mic'd, right? So um, when you're in a building and if somebody forgets to turn on the mic, people can often hear, but on the live stream, you get nothing except moving lips. And so that's really an irritation. But there's also some things that you'll want to go in the live stream that you may not want to um, have amplified in church. For example, your choir, your piano, your organ. So you need a soundboard that can accommodate that. And most will do that. They have a monitor channel you can use, um, but that's something to ch check out. So if you have the type of system where you just turn it on and that just works, um, that's fine, but it may not work for live streaming because you'll often want to turn off the other microphones so you don't get extra noise in the system because um, that can be quite irritating, irritating as well. Um, so Chris had asked a question about micing choirs and things like that. So that's, again, you don't want to amplify them. You're not going to mic them close generally, so it shouldn't matter. Um, if you're going to wear a mask, it's going to check, affect the sound. Um, it's like wearing earmuffs, right? So that will have an impact for sure. But uh, um, there's not necessarily a lot you can do about that. Uh, if you need to wear the masks. So um, we've thought about that with our, our choir. Uh, we're not currently meeting with the choir. We might do some, we have some special music which we pre-recorded outside of that and then brought in as a recording. And we have the capacity to play that in-house and also live stream it at the same time. So, so those are some considerations how to deal with that. So we're looking at that for some potential choir projects this year. Um, a smaller group that can uh, can rehearse within the guidelines that have just been put out and then maybe uh, sing without a mask just to record. So we'll figure that out. But live in church is not a possibility for us yet for that. Um, and for music, what happens is uh, Pastor Anna and myself, we lead the music singing. Congregation can sing quietly with their mask on if they want, but there's no, that's not sufficient for the live stream. So we have to leave our microphones on a lot more. Okay. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so you might have existing equipment you can use and that'll work. Uh, you'll need somebody to operate the soundboard. We talked about that. <clears throat> and a way to join your video and your audio. So, for example, uh, we use v, uh, vMix. Uh, it'll do that quite well. We think OBS will. Some of the other ones will. I don't know that 100% for sure, but I think OBS can add that delay if, it, if you need it. Okay, video. How many cameras will you be using? So we have two. Um, Stephen has three, and I think uh, Maziah has three. Is that right, Chris? Yes, it is. Yeah. So uh, Maziah and us have uh, what we call PTZ cameras. So pan, tilt, and zoom is what that stands for. Um, so ours are remotely operated. Um, we have a joystick that does that. Or you can use a, there's a hand remote like your TV remote, or there's actually software that can do it. Uh, Stephen's are just fixed, right? Yeah. <laughs> so... Um, um, so, so then you have to think about camera angles, uh, the lay of your building. Um, we prefer two uh, because you don't, if you have to pan or tilt your camera, you don't necessarily want that to be live at the time because if it moves too fast, you can get seasick, <laughs> things like that. So you, you switch it to the non-live camera or you, you move the non-live camera is what it is at the time. Um, and then what kind of camera? Um, so you often, people often think, well, we'll just get a, like a webcam or somebody's handy cam, things like that. Did I talk about this already? I've... No? Okay. <laughs> so you have to be, the, the resolution on most webcams are not sufficient. Um, it might work for a second camera that's wide, right? Just the big thing, um, but generally won't be um, satisfactory. Um, and a lot of the, um, the handy cams or the webcam, uh, no webcams, handy cams or video recorders, things like that, DSLR cameras, don't have a live video output. So they may have a USB port, but that may only work for data transfer. So it may not work for live at all. You can pre-record if you want, that'll work, and then, but to do it live won't work. So you have to check that out. Some of them, 
apparently do. Some might have an HDMI output, for example. Some of the GoPros might work, some of those sorts of things. But so just be careful that don't assume that you can buy a $300 handy cam and be good because it probably won't work. Uh, the optics are important. Um, so the optical zoom is way superior to the digital zoom because um, you just won't get <coughs> the digital zoom tends to get really grainy pretty quickly. So it does work potentially depends on the resolution you start with. Um, if you don't have the PTZ remote, then you'll need someone to operate the camera if you're going to uh, zoom and things like that. So you have to then think about where your cameras are going to be located if they're remotely operated or manually operated. And then what you're going to use for a switcher. So Stephen has a hardware switcher. We have a software switcher. So they both work. Just depends on whatever and what you can get your hands on, what you can afford, things like that. Uh, how you'll get the feed to the switcher. So there's three main types of feeds that'll work. One is an SD uh, feed, runs on coax cable. Uh, one's an HDMI uh, feed. You're familiar with that from your TV. Uh, the newer one, uh, that's what Chris's works on, ours works on, is NDI, and it just uses a, a Ethernet cable, a Category 6 or 5E uh, cable. You can actually even run the power to the camera over that. Um, so one cable does it all. So that's the newer system. And um, that's what we use works pretty well. So uh, we have a, we use NDI, uh, so does Chris, but they have uh, new tech cameras, so they may have some, their software may, issues may be there. We don't generally have those, but sometimes we have to restart the cameras because <laughs> they go to sleep and then they don't <laughs> wake up and, <laughs> and want to respond properly because um, they're not used for, you know, most of the, most of the week they're not used. Um, Anyways, to get it into the computer, you'll often need a gra uh, graphics capture card, not with the NDI, because that runs on the ethernet, um, but for the SD and the HDMI, you'll often need a graphics capture card. Uh, okay. If you have NDI, you'll also need a dedicated router for that, um, which isn't hard. It has to be a minimum of a gigabit, which most of them are now, but if you have an old router laying around, it may not work, so, um, so it needs to be a gigabit one. So we run two routers. We run one just for our sanctuary. I think that's actually what Mazaya does as well. And then we run uh, that from that router to another router, which gets us connected to the internet. Um, but that way we don't get any other traffic from the building on that router because it's all dedicated for the NDI uh, part of that. Um, the cameras are probably going to be the most expensive part of your system if you go with good quality. So just know that that's what it's going to be. Our cameras are about 2,500 bucks. Um, Chris's are about $4,000 if you buy them new and separate. Um, so that's, that's the, the, the price range you're looking for for those. Um, there are some other options. Um, uh, stuff like Steven has, sometimes you can get broadcast cameras used, uh, good quality um, for cheaper. It just depends on what you have available. Um, so you have to look for that and see what kind of deals are out there, what's going to work for your system. Uh, Anything else I missed, uh, Stephen? I did this recently, so I, I can't remember if I just said all that or whether <laughs> this is new. So, um, okay, internet capacity. So that you do need capacity. Um, and the most important part of it is the upstream, so the uploading part. Um, and you'll need at least two uh, megabytes, but preferably higher. So the higher you can get on the upstream, the, more, the better you'll be off. Um, the actual speed will vary with the resolution of your live stream. Um, higher resolution means um, you'll need a faster speed. And it tends to be exponential and not linear. So um, so just know that. 720p is what we go for. Um, we broadcast that, and that's perfectly acceptable for most people. Um, you can reduce that to 480 or 360 to get by, and we generally acceptable. I don't know what, Stephen, if you guys are going 1080 or not, but uh, yes, it's 1080, yeah, I, I checked 1080i coming out of my cameras, 1080p coming out of the black magic, but then yeah, YouTube might be dumbing it down a bit. Yeah, it depends on where you're streaming to. They may also downgrade you anyways, just um, for space and their own uh, streaming uh, system. So you definitely don't need 4K. <laughs> so you don't need to see the nose hairs of the past or, or things like that. So. Um, and depends on what people are looking at it on. Um, if you're looking on your laptop, you definitely don't need even 720. But if you're on your big TV, you might need 720 will make a difference. So, 
uh, you'll need something to encode your video. So either a computer or a dedicated hardware piece. So Steven's got dedicated hardware. We have a computer. Uh, they both work, it just depends on what you do. Um, so rural churches and uh, Michelle, I'm not sure, you guys are in town there, but I'm not sure what speed access you have. You're okay? Um, we're currently not in a good position for live stream. Okay. But we are, we've got uh, council approval to, to go with uh, amazing TELUS uh, fiber optics. So okay, then so we'll then be, you'll be fine. We'll do that. Yeah. Yes. Okay. We have Shaw here um, and we have a Shaw uh, a whole system, which they put in um, and that gives us more than enough. So that's, that's good. Um, Shaw doesn't have as fast of upload speed as TELUS does. Download they do have equivalent pretty much, but not the upload. That's the difference between uh, the end, the last bit of it, which is uh, coax cable is different than fiber all the way. So, but not every place has fiber, or not every place has cable. So, uh, Chris, I think, are you guys on the local cable or are you on, what are you guys on, do you know? Don't know. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's Eastlink. We broadcast to Eastlink, the cable company, but we also go through Telus. To Telus. Okay, so that's who your other provider is. Yeah. Okay. So th is that enough about the internet capacity? Do you have any other questions about that? Or okay. Uh, software. So it depends on your setup. So uh, Chris is using the new tech system there. I know and. Um, we're using vMix and Steven's got his own, mostly hardware, but he does have a piece of software that runs that. Um, so OBS is open broadcaster software. It's, it's free. It works on Mac and PC. Uh, vMix only works on PC. So, uh, and then we also use another piece and I'll show you when I show you the setup, how we have ours done that way. So it depends on how you're set up. Some people are just using a single camera. Um, then you can just use, if it's a phone or whatever, you can use uh, Facebook direct from your camera or YouTube even. Um, or you can use um, a camera uh, like an iPhone to uh, to a laptop using a Medicam and uh, that'll bring it in as an input. So there's some other options there. It's also a OBS cam software that'll do that. So there's all kinds of things you can do now with um, additional software that you couldn't do before. So the sky's sort of the limit on that. Um, let's see. Yeah, we'll show that. That'll be good enough. They are the church. I think we talked about that enough. Platforms. Okay, so <coughs> there's uh, about three main, main platforms that churches have been using so far. Um, so one is uh, YouTube. That's what we currently use. And all of them have pros and cons. So the pros of YouTube is that it's free. It offers closed captioning as an automatic part. Uh, it can be searched and archived. It's watchable on a smart TV, so you don't have to have a computer for it, um, but you do need the internet. Uh, some of the cons are copyright issues. So uh, they have a number of um, algorithms that search, and so you could be flagged for all kinds of things if you're not, even if you're careful sometimes. Um, we'll talk about copyright in a minute, but just know that YouTube is probably the most aggressive right now. They have another company and it's all about money. So if you haven't monetized your stream, you're generally okay, um, but not necessarily. So we'll talk about that in a bit. Um, there can be a time lag between when the live stream goes out and then when it appears in the archive, um, that can take up to a half day or more. Um, it is possible to find it, but you have to look through 17 screens to find it. So. <clears throat> I know sometimes people are frustrated they have trouble finding it like Sunday afternoon. Uh, one way around that has been Anna often posted on Facebook where the link is, the link, and you can find it that way. But um, And the comments are not that helpful on, uh, on YouTube if you want to have them during the service. So the next one that people use mostly is Facebook. So the pros again are it's free. Um, it has good distribution. Um, some like the chat feature and use it during worship. So they chat to each other and they share the piece, things like that. Um, uh, but you also have no control over unauthorized spam and negative comments that could come. So you can't just uh, easily eliminate somebody. So that might have to be monitored um, because Facebook's, you can get there from all different ways. So um, we've had a, 
mostly been okay. We had one weird comment and when it disappeared <laughs> later on, but uh, uh, on our YouTube uh, feed, uh, somebody suggesting that women shouldn't be preaching, for example. So, um, but it did disappear. I don't know who removed it, but. So you may or may not want to even allow comments. Um, so some of the cons are it's not easily archived. So it sort of dis it can often disappear. It, sometimes it can be found later on on your feed, but it's not as convenient as YouTube that way. Uh, you need a Facebook ac account if you want to chat, and it's not viewable on TV. So those are some of the challenges with Facebook. So some of the other services, there's paid services, there's things like Vimeo, things like that. Some of the pros are you have more control and better website integration, um, and there could be less copyright issues. Some of the cons are the cost and the loss of closed captioning or automatic closed captioning. Uh, there are some other services that could provide closed captioning, but what I've seen is they charge up to $1.25 a minute. <laughs> so um, that starts to add up in a hurry. So I'm not sure if there's software as well that might do it for free. Um, I just started to look at that, but I don't have all the answers on that, but I know that that's one of the issues. Chris. James, you mentioned closed captioning for YouTube, but I wasn't aware. It, I don't think we use that feature. It, it's, yeah, it's automatic. So if you turn on closed captioning on your YouTube stream, it should appear. So I know that we have quite a few people that actually use that because um, they can, if they have hearing problems, they can actually see the text come out. So, okay. so that's um, that's a real pr uh, plus for us, for those people that have uh, hearing problems. Now, sometimes we run into trouble that it's seniors and they, did, they get it turned off and they don't know how to turn it back on and you know, all that stuff. So mm -hmm. that's a bit of an issue, but I know dad, dad uses that, for example, he likes that when he can get it turned on. So it's not but that it's hard. In the uh, viewer end, uh, it's yeah. nothing you do on your upload. It's when they're watching and playback. Yeah. I think you can in your settings, turn it off, but, um, but I'm not even a hundred percent sure about that. So. Um, okay, but it's so an automatic it's, thing. It's more the user that, that does it, not the, uh, the sender. Okay. Yep. Well, it, no, um, YouTube encodes it. And I'm not sure the live stream is actually, when it's live, if it's encoded. Um, I haven't been able to figure that out because I'm always busy <laughs> um, during the live stream. But for sure, when it gets posted afterwards, the, then the comments are there or the captions are there. And they're pretty accurate. I mean, they're generated automatically, but they're pretty accurate. Sorry, I'm Michelle. Just a question. Um, we have our service. Uh, we've projected our services before we had to close our doors. Yep. So then when we started recording, we would have um, layered a layered television of, you know, the minister, whoever's leading, then we would have the words we would do our own captioning i guess at the bottom like we'd continue with our our projection service but it would be done by us yeah and it's it's put at the bottom at the top or whatever is that what you guys do uh so no then, it, it appears automatically you know? oh so when when it hears text it will just put it out on the bottom when you when you have that wow. turned on so, so yeah so that would eliminate all that work i guess yeah, so we still put hymns up, and I'll show you some of that, how that goes. Um, but but it's kind of nice because it actually picks up all the comments, announcements, all that sort of stuff that you wouldn't normally caption that way anyway. So, okay, so copyright issues and concerns, because this is the next one, and this is becoming a bigger issue. So you do need uh, licensing permission from CCLI or one license or one of those, and you'll need the streaming extension. So that comes extra. You also, if you're using Augsburg Fortress liturgies, you need to pay them now. They were free till the end of August, but now they charge you, it's not that much, a hundred bucks a year or so um, for using their liturgies for live streaming. So they have a strict live streaming uh, fee now. Um, uh, the nice thing about the Augsburg part at least is there's no reporting. So there is with one license, you have to report all the hymns you've used, but uh, you don't have to do that with Augsburg. So. Um, <clears throat> don't get me started on the morality of all this sort of stuff. That's a whole different question, but uh, um, you'll also need to be very careful about using copyrighted music, especially any commercially commercial recordings, because um, those will get you flagged and in trouble potentially, and you may have to either take down your video, have the audio stripped out of that section, or that piece of section removed, edited out. So, um, and, and if you're on YouTube and that happens too many times, they will 
uh, kicked you off. So if you're a, an abuser that way. Again, if it's non-monetized, it's usually okay, but we're very careful about uh, not using much commercial music at all because that's uh, it's very easy for their algorithms to detect that. So you have to be careful about that. We also get flagged. You know, often what happens is there's a separate service, which is a YouTube a partner, a Google partner, preferred partner. Um, they run the algorithms. Um, so if I have a recording and I have a recording on there of Amazing Grace, for example, and I submit that, if it discovers the tune Amazing Grace, it will say, okay, you have a copyright violation because Joe Blow has a re this recording um, and you're guilty till proven innocent <laughs> is how that system works. Um, and usually what they want is if you're monetized, they want the money. So they will take all of the money that you're earning off your page um, and allegedly distribute it to the copyright holder. Although I think the fee is about 80% of it and you know, a small portion might get to the copyright holder. But again, even though some of it's public domain or you have licensing through one license, uh, it may get flagged, but it doesn't mean it's be held against you unless it's uh, often a commercial recording. But these are the times we live in. It's a gray, a little bit of a gray area. Um, but just so you know that, that that can happen. So be prepared to remove something if you need to, but also try not to put stuff up that's, that you know is copper. Some, you know, for example, when they have the slideshow and they have, you know, some songs in there, that's when, that's one of the places you're likely to get uh, nabbed potentially, so. All right, any questions about copyright stuff? You're good on that, okay. Uh, we're going to talk about some hardware setup, and I've been talking for a long time, so I'm going to get uh, Stephen to show us his system. He's got pictures now, so. Yeah, so <laughs> I didn't have these before, but let's uh, see how this goes. Photos, there we go. Uh, okay, so this is the view from our balcony. And so this is one of my cameras. It's up on the jib. It's set up for a, a wide shot. And this is, well, camera two. Uh, so it's just off to uh, point of my screen here. Uh, just underneath uh, the pillar uh, opposite the there. And a uh, better shot here. So behind the pulpit or uh, the altar looking forward. Um, it's the control at the back, uh, camera in the balcony and camera to the side. Uh, all my cabling runs up and through uh, the valences here across the balcony and down. Uh, we've recently installed these extra lights. Uh, uh, just because lighting is an important part of video, the better the lights, the better everything looks. Uh, this is my setup at the back. Uh, so our cameras, they all feed down here into my switcher. Uh, this laptop here uh, shares, it, uh, runs our PowerPoint, but I use a free worship. So it's uh, like pro presenter, but free. Uh, Send, I split the signal out to our TVs and out to the switcher. So that's input one. Uh, this is then camera one, uh, or input two, control uh, side camera and my overhead. Uh, this is the Blackmagic eight, uh, Ada Mini. Um, four HDMI ins, uh, HDMI out that goes to the TV. That's my preview monitor over here. Uh, USB-C up to my laptop over here, which is my streaming laptop. Uh, audio in, and then I can uh, control. The, it's a feed from my board. Uh, it's got the delay options and everything I can do with that. Uh, also over the USB, so it sends the video audio signal and I can control my switcher through the Blackmagic software. Uh, there's the audio settings for it. Uh, each camera input uh, has audio because it's HDMI uh, plus two microphone inputs. Uh, but I'm using uh, yeah, microphone one for my audio. Uh, 
this is the shot from the overhead. It's still uh, sending me an SD signal. Um, just, uh, I've got the adapters on order. It's just they're not here yet. Uh, that's the shot from the control. So uh, this is our worst assistant. Um, and so this is how I deal with my graphics. Uh, unless I go full screen, otherwise it's an over the shoulder uh, picture in picture. Um, That's how we were doing ours when we had it pre-recorded at, at home. So we, similar way. Yeah, uh, and so this is the same camera, but then our lesson reader, uh, she's substantially shorter. So that's one of the nice things about having my camera at the back, I can tilt down, zoom in a little more. Um, that's camera two, uh, is, uh, isn't Pastor Tim. This is Pastor Laird, my dad, because uh, Tim was away last week. Um, and so this is during the sermon. So this is yeah, just my cutaway shot, uh, as opposed to my camera one. Uh, so these are both the sermon, but just something to cut back and forth between, keep, keep some interest. Uh, and this is what I cut to during the prayers of the people. Uh, just so that I'm not focused on somebody praying. Um, it's, uh, but then the audio feed still comes through. Uh, and again, this is the announcements, dismissal, something like that at the end of the service and just from the back. Uh, you may or may not know dad is a lot taller than Pastor Tim. Uh, so again, one of the nice things about not having the presets uh, is I can frame everything up uh, depending on who's uh, preaching, leading on, on screen. Um, so that's my setup and kind of how everything looks. All right, any questions for um, Stephen off the bat? Then I can show you mine and then you can ask whatever other questions you have. Chris. Um, it's, it's a question that I don't think has an answer, but I'm curious as to how everybody else is, is handling it. Um, one of the bits of feedback we received from some of our people is that when there are hymns, um, they would prefer to see just the words on the full screen. Uh, and the, the reason is that they're viewing the service on a tablet, um, not necessarily on their phone, but at least on a tablet, so a smaller thing and they want to be able to see the words and sing along. Of course, there's other opinions. Some people just want to see the singers and, and enjoy the experience. Um, but how do other people handle that? Uh, right now, we're, uh, everything's pre-recorded. Uh, liturgy is all spoken. Uh, so I just go to a full screen slide of uh, what, the offertory or whatever we're putting up. And then all our hymns, I just go to YouTube, search for the hymn. And before when we were just pre-recording, I was putting up just lyric videos that I could find for it. Uh, but now that we're back, that I also have people seeing the pews, I just look for the best quality video. Uh, preferably it's got the lyrics, but if it's a person singing the song, uh, but it's better than any version I can find, that, that's what I'm using. I'll show you what we do, because uh, that's in my pictures, and so maybe we'll uh, go there now if I can get the... I, uh, oh, I'll, go I'll ahead. just weigh in here quick. Um, what, what we've been doing is all of ours is pre-recorded, we do our own music, and we um, have the music, uh, the music leader, and the musician meet and record at their convenience wherever it might be at church, it might be at home. And <laughs> it's an interesting question you offered because I found an interesting uh, Sunday. This past Sunday I was leading the music and my musician did not want to be in the camera. And normally we have the angle so that both of us or at least one of us is pictured. The, <laughs> the way she, my friend who did the music she put her camera, my camera we were using, and I have a smart watch and I can run it from my, my watch, which is really fun. But we had it set on the piano. 
and we recorded everything. We did liturgy, we did hymns, we did everything, and it was all focused on myself leading. <laughs> we checked it when we initially started, everything was fine, but when I got home, I realized that with the vibration of the p piano, didn't it bubble every few seconds, like just every second it bubbled. It, it just was like bubbling, bubbling, bubbling. And there was no, no other way to fix it, but to redo it. And we did not have that opportunity unless late at night. And I knew my voice was not the best at that time because it got late at night for us. And I knew doing it again was just gonna add more stress. And the Sunday prior to this, I, during worship, was wishing, couldn't we just have the words? And so that's what we did this Sunday. And I thought it was spectacular. I did get some feedback. And right away, my friend contacted me and said, I want to share this with my mother. I think she could follow along. So I think it's a good thing. That was one thing that Matt's church um, at Peace Lutheran Church in Leduc does uh, when they're, again, it's easier to do that on a pre-recorded uh, platform as opposed to a live stream platform. I'm not quite sure about the live stream piece, but um, when they're editing it, it's always, it's a lot of work uh, just because we don't know any better, but uh, they would uh, do screenshots of the PowerPoint slides and overlay it um, as oh, wow. and edit it so it's only the words that are uh, visible and the musician is playing it back you can hear the audio but you can't really see the musician you're only seeing this, the the verses one at a time like you would when projecting from uh, in-person worship I'll, I'll show you how we do it and then that should uh, <clears throat> give you a bit of a uh, primer into that so let me just Oh, and while you're pulling that up, uh, a life hack with uh, PowerPoint is you can go to save as, and you can export your entire thing as JPEGs, uh, it save you screenshotting everything. Uh, and then a lot of editors, you can bring in uh, your still images. Uh, so that would probably save you a lot of time and you'll probably get a better image out of it. Well. Um, and actually that's, that's how I'm doing it to, for my uh, free worship because the PowerPoint export is not great. Uh, but you can go in a, a little more technical, but if you edit your command script, uh, you can uh, export higher resolution than PowerPoint does natively. We, um, for some of that stuff, we actually use the graphics program, type it in and then export it as a PNG. And then you can affect uh, the transparency of it. So it doesn't fully necessarily cover, but it, um, and you can change the background. So that, that's where you use that for words and stuff. But <clears throat> I'll show you our system because we can do that, a lot of this stuff right within, um, within vMix. So, okay. All right, so that's, can you see now? Yep, so that's our entire system. And I'll show you the different pieces of it as we, uh, as we go through. Um, so <clears throat> this is our audio board. It's a Yamaha digital board. Um, this green tape here, for example, is um, that's one of the microphones we use just for live streaming and not for in uh, house. Um, so the tape is there, so the volunteers don't um, think they should bring up the volume on that because we don't necessarily want that. Um, so that's the uh, low tech solution to that problem. Um, this uh, computer here is um, we run this uh, the screens in the house, and we have those often different than what we on, want on our live stream. So that's the we use a program called Slide Dog to uh, control the PowerPoints and videos and all that sort of stuff. And then SlideDog also exports directly into vMix uh, through NDI. Um, so that works really well, actually. Um, this is then the vMix, and I'll show you that in more detail later on. That's what that looks like. This is the controller for the cameras, and this is just the other keyboard. Um, this is our uh, camera controller, PTZ controller, so it'll do up to six cameras. And these are all presets. So camera one, preset five, you just hit camera one, five, and it'll move there. And the joystick um, will zoom, tilt, all that sort of stuff right there. Um, so these are, this is part of our audio system. 
uh, almost never used cassette and uh, DVD player. Uh, these are the wireless receivers. Um, this is the router we have for um, the sanctuary site. And uh, we use as much wired connections as possible. We don't rely on any Wi-Fi um, for this system because it just it's uh, not always as reliable as you need or doesn't have the speed you need. And then our two computers, which are very dusty, I see. <coughs> this is how we get our audio in. Uh, so it comes out as an as a audio stream and then it's converted digitally and then it runs into a USB port. Um, this is from the other side. So this little TV up here, um, we actually want a bigger one. We just borrowed this one from the youth room temporarily, is for our in-house monitor because we need to be able to see what camera's on and um, what's going out. So we make sure the, the person running is actually on the same thing as we should be because the big screens often have a different picture. So that's what that's for. We don't have the tally lights. Those are the little red lights on the camera. So we don't necessarily know which camera they have on. Uh, those will work with um, with vMix, and but uh, it's about another thousand bucks to put that together. So we haven't bothered spending that kind of money. Uh, let's see. We also have started the last while using a teleprompter. So um, we were just trying it out. So we use this. It's uh, one of the projectors, an old screen. We use an Apple TV and an iPad and teleprompter software on the iPad. So that's worked out pretty good. So we use that for sermons, actually for all the readings. Um, and we can control it from the front. So uh, we tried a few different systems and this is what we've settled on. So again, that's a higher tech than you might want, but it's all stuff that's possible. Um, the PTZ Optics also has a software controller. So you don't need the, the little console with the joystick. You can run it from here. So we have the two cameras, a 12 zoom, 12, 12 times zoom and a 20 times zoom. And the presets are down here, so that also works. If you don't have money for the for the camera controller, um, so this is VMix. This window here is the preview window, so that's what you would normally put over there. All these are various inputs. Um, so this is the two cameras. This is the input from the other computer from the slide dog, um, and these are overlays. They they're called. And that's how we uh, use to get the words and stuff in there. And I'll show you what that looks like. Um, so this is a hymn, for example. So you can see the background of the church. It depends on sometimes you can see the musicians. And then the words come here. And we just change them perverse, same, same way you might uh, as, a, as a PowerPoint, for example. But this has an overlay. It works quite well within the system. So that's vMix does that. Um, one of the other things we do is we start the stream about 10 minutes early because um, it takes a while for people to get in. And so we start the timer and then it counts down to when uh, the service actually begins. So we usually have no audio until uh, the prelude starts about three minutes before or so. And that's that's all done within vMix. Uh, this is a newer thing. Uh, when, we, when we did not have in-person worship, then most of our readings were recorded at home and then we edited those, put them up, but now we have people coming in. So if they read from uh, in the service, we use a split screen like this, and this isn't a split screen, it's a screen with an overlay. Um, and so that's where the text then goes. So it's similar to what uh, Stephen does with the green, that's what we do on the videos when we edit them, but if we do them in church, uh, we use this now, it works quite well. Again, that stuff you have to have set up in advance, and this is just another picture of uh, Anna, just standing behind the altar. So these are just uh, my taking a picture of the monitor. So this is not the best quality, um, but we find the cameras work pretty well. Uh, let me go back a bit. I did have pictures of the cameras also. Uh, so that's one above the screen. That's one there. And this is the other one here. So um, they're fairly small, but they are uh, pretty mighty. They're about the same size as, uh, as Mazaya has actually. So. Okay, so questions now. Stay on a stop share <coughs> about our setup, or so we don't use like Procaster. I think you guys use Procaster, don't you, Chris? Procaster for which part? We don't use Procaster, but for which part? Uh, to, for your to run your powerpoints and those sorts of things, or Power Presenter, or one of those. Oh, uh, Easy Worship is what we Easy use. Easy Worship. Okay, yeah. So you can you can connect Easy Worship into the system too. Depends on how you want to how you yeah. want. Yeah, we do that. 
And there's a ton of stuff I didn't even show you that vMix will do. Picture in picture, green screen, multiple cameras, multiple shots. You can set it up. Uh, looks like a news thing, banners across the bottom, all that stuff you can do. So it looks just like TV on the six o'clock news. It'll also record directly. Uh, um, and so we won't, we can, or we do sometimes, we pre record there directly. So the Bishop Sermon, for example, he came, came by, we recorded that directly through VMix and then uploaded it separately. Um, you can also record each camera separately. That's how you get the um, potentially the uh, um, instant replay, <laughs> things like that. So we don't have a need for that, so we don't do that. Uh, but that's all possible through VMix. You can actually have score cards, short clocks, um, but. So far, we're not started that, so we haven't done any store blocks for, for Anna and I about who gets the most whatever, but um, those are all possible within vMix. vMix, you can buy different levels of, um, so we're about the mid-grade level, um, so that's generally good enough, so. Questions? Are you overwhelmed, underwhelmed, <laughs> excited? <laughs> So some it's of these... a it's a challenge like you like you had said uh, switching to a live stream doesn't necessarily cut the work hey eh? I was I was thinking that it would just kind of cut the time that we're working behind the camera because we have that hour to worship together and then it all um, everything's clipped and ready to go but then it's all done and then it's done <laughs> it happens all in um, you know in one hour but there's more prep to it generally is what we find so you're uh, finding more more prep um well it, it, like to put all the words in all that sort of stuff that all takes time well right? we so we do that already so if you're doing so, that already then it may not take you a lot of time no so yeah um, okay i mean some of the things that takes a lot of time was the editing of the videos that people would su submit and things like that yeah so. yeah um but you do have to think a little bit different about worship when you're have a lot of people on the live stream so yeah so, so even, when when you're doing this you you have the words up on the screen and then people still use closed captioning you're saying um some will yep yeah. so because oh. sometimes like if it's a hymn it'll just say music sometimes it won't actually figure out the words during uh -huh. singing okay because a lot of the time we we just have a banner in this corner or that corner. Sometimes it's up high, depending on the camera angle and yeah. how it's panned. But yeah, sometimes we have our words down there. So it would interfere with where closed captioning, captioning generally. If it's a song, gets. it wouldn't matter probably because it probably wouldn't necessarily pick that up. But okay. um, we haven't had any complaints about that, but, uh, but it's quite useful for the sermon and things like that, which you don't have the words up, right? So. So again, it's partly just what you, how you decide to run it in your own context and environment, right? Because everybody's a little bit different, so. All right. So I do have a, uh, the last, oh, just, uh, there's a list of, I won't show that, but um, I've sent Prema the, uh, my notes, and it has a list of all the websites of, or many of the websites that we've talked about from the different production. So um, Mevo, for example, is a single camera solution. I'm not sure that's really appropriate for any of you guys. Uh, many cams and PTZ optics and vMix and open broadcaster. NDI.tv for the NDI tools, uh, Blackmagic and NewTek. So those are some of the most common places. Um, the vMix site is actually really good. It has, and the PTZ optics site are both good. They have lots of videos, how to how to videos, and educational stuff, and so um, you can check those guys out as well. A lot of that's free, so um, you know you wonder. Oh, I, I know I can do it somehow, but I don't know how. So look, and there's often a how to video on that sort of stuff. So uh, PTZ Optics also it comes under a few different names, so you might also see it as a as a conference cam, and one Hubble cam. That's the other name they used to go by. So. Um, just depending on which market they're in. But. So there you go. Any other questions?
Okay. You're good. Okay. So uh, there were other questions asked, but I think we've got most of that covered. So if you don't have any questions, then I think we'll just ask Prema to send us out. <laughs> send us off. Well, thank you. I know it's a little late. Well, just a little. But thank you for taking this time and coming. You know, you've been doing this technology stuff. We've been kind of shoved into it. Messiah has been doing this for ages. Um, so thank you for taking this time to come and not just listen, but also to dialogue and bring your own wisdom into this. We bring your own thoughts that we can share and hear again. So may the Lord be with you. May the Lord strengthen you. May the Lord guide you and bless you with God's peace as you continue to nourish and nurture God's people in God's kingdom, all for God's glory. May we go with God's peace to rest and be rejuvenated again for another day filled with opportunities to meet God wherever we are and opportunities to proclaim God's love, forgiveness, and grace to whomever we meet. Amen. 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 Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing. Thanks, Appreciate everybody. that. If you have questions, you can uh, email Stephen or myself if you have any specific ones or give me a call. Absolutely. So we'll have this recording, uh, the previous recording, along with Pastor James's notes. Um, and also both uh, Pastor James's and, and Stephen's email down there as well if you need to get in touch with them. All right. Thank you. Okay. See you. Good night. <laughs>